Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, and today I'm going to be filming my February TBR. I have not filmed a TBR video in forever, so I think this is uh, gonna be a fun one, at least for me. I hope you guys enjoy as well. So I have around 10-ish books on my TBR for February. Usually I average probably around like 15 books a month, but I do try to give myself some room to do some mood reading. So these are the books that I want to read, but they're not everything I want to read, you know? A lot of these books I'm not gonna have physical copies of because I usually try and read my books through my library or through Audible or Scribd, um, just trying to get to read them before I actually buy them. I really like to have my bookcases be filled with books that I really, really love or want to reread, and I feel like it saves me a lot of money to get them from the library or Kindle Unlimited rather than getting the physical book. Um, and also I really like to read on my Kindle, so. So I'm totally happy with getting most of the books on ebook version and then buying the physical copy if it's a book that I really, really love and foresee myself rereading. So there's only one book on my TBR that is like a mandatory read because I do have a book club with two of my best friends in real life and we read a romance book once, sometimes twice a month. And this month I'm so excited because it's the start of a new fantasy series that I have been meaning to read for at least the last couple of months since I first heard about it, but it sounds so good. And it's called The Serpent and the Wings of Night by Carissa Broadbent. This one just looks so good. So this one I'm gonna be reading on Kindle Unlimited and it follows our main character who is the adopted daughter of a vampire king and she has to enter this tournament to like really make a name for herself and she ends up making an alliance with another sexy vampire and that's really all I know about it and that's all I really want to know going into it but I'm so excited I recommended this book to my friends um, or I asked my friends if we could read this one for our book club this month and I'm so excited to get to it I do try and wait until a little bit closer to our um, our zoom facetime meetings with each other so our meeting is on the 19th of february so i'll probably read it the second or third week of the month so i can't wait this is like i feel like this is gonna be a five star i don't give out a lot of five stars but i feel like this is gonna get one and i'm so pumped because we've really just been reading contemporary romances and i'm a little bit tired of them now so this is the first and only required read for me in the month of february so let's just go into some more reads for the rest of the month so my main goal for this year reading wise is to focus on completing series or getting caught up in series so i feel like in january i've done a really good job at this um most of the books that i've read have either been sequels or the final book in series i've been having a really good time trying to catch up or finish all the series that i want to i recently made a spreadsheet of every series that I've ever read and um, kind of decided which ones I want to continue, which ones I want to DNF, and I ended up DNFing like 150 series. I read a lot of romance companion series and sometimes I'm just not interested in some of the couples so I just like skip to other couples books that I'm more interested in. So a lot fell into that and then a lot of it is just YA series that I started reading back in like 2016 that just don't appeal to me anymore. So that's why a lot of them are now dnf'd so the next part of my tbr is continuing or finishing series so the first series i'm continuing on with is the addicted to you series by christina and becca ritchie i have read the first three books one of them's like technically a novella but it's kind of a long novella um three books in that series and then there's a companion series the callaway sisters series which follows the sisters of the main character from the addicted series so in february i want to read thrive and addicted after all these are the final two books in the lily and low series and then after that there are three more books in the callaway sisters series which i'm gonna read probably in march because i don't want to read five addicted callaway sisters books in one month it's just gonna be a lot. So if you're not familiar with the Addicted series, it follows Lily and Lo. Lily is a sex addict and Lo is an alcoholic and they have been pretending to date and live with each other for the past however many years to kind of um, help each other out when it comes to their family asking questions and stuff like that. They're really just helping each other hide their addictions from their families. So that's what the main five books in this series companion series follows so thrive is the fourth one and this one follows i think it's the events of the first two calloway sisters books 
but from Lily and Lowe's perspective, which I'm not sure I'm gonna love because we already know everything that happens. And to be honest, Lily and Lowe are my least favorite characters from this series. Like, I still like them, they're fine, but they're not as exciting as the other sisters that we follow. So I think that being in their heads for what happened during those other two books is not gonna be exciting to me. So I'm not expecting a lot from this one, but then the fifth book is Addicted After All and this follows Lily and Lowe again, but it's the final book in their series. So I'm sure it's gonna like wrap everything up even though it's a really long book, so uh, we'll see. And then I'll be able to be done with their main part of the series, which I'm not gonna lie, I'm excited to be done with them, sorry. And the next book I want to read is my most anticipated book for the entire year, and it is Chain of Thorns by Cassandra Clare. This is the third and final book tier um, in the Lost Hours series, which is my favorite of Cassandra Clare's series. I am obsessed with it. I have read all of her other series, well, like the main Shadowhunters series, and I didn't really love them. I think I gave them mostly like three stars. Um, maybe a couple of them were higher than that, like the last book in the Mortal Instruments series, City of Heavenly Fire, five out of five. I love that book. But the other series as wholes, um, like three stars. But this one I'm just obsessed with. And this follows the children of the characters from the Infernal Devices, which takes place in the 1800s, is that it? Early 1900s? Um, and I just love them. I love all the characters. I love that we get to see um, the characters from the Infernal Devices and the second book ended in such a cliffhanger and I don't know what they're gonna do. And they've been dropping little teaser lines on Instagram and I'm just so excited, I can't wait. So, oh, it's gonna be so good, yeah. Oh, amazing. Okay, the next three are all Katie Roberts books. These are continuing on the series that I've already read from her. So the first one is Broderick, which is the Sabine Valley series, which I think is on hold now, but I read the first book, Abel, last year, and this is the second book. And each book in the series, supposedly, even though now the series might not go forward, follows a different brother. Abel in the first book won like a competition, and because he won this competition, um, the each of his brothers gets a wife, essentially. But I like the first one enough to continue it, so this follows the second brother, Broderick, and I think this might be a polyamorous one, which I love polyamorous relationships. Like, why, why would you choose? Why would you have to choose when you can have both? Or multiple, you know? Or all. And the other two books are books in the Dark Olympus series. The first one is Electric Idol, which is the second book in this series. And then the second book is Radiant Sin, which comes out in February. I uh, skipped the second book and read the third book, which is Wicked Beauty, which I absolutely loved. It's my favorite Katie Roberts book, but now I have to go back and read the second one, and then I'll read the fourth one. The first one's a Hades and Persephone retelling, and so they all follow like mythical gods essentially. So yeah, I'm, I like them enough. I love Wicked Beauty, didn't really love Neon Gods, but um, they're companion series, so they're fun and easy to read. So I'm gonna read both of these. And the next book is the next book in the Wayward Children series by Shauna McGuire. It's called Lost in the Moment and Found. These ones I'm sure you've heard of before. They follow children who went through doorways at some point to go into like their ideal perfect worlds and then they come back to our world. And I just read all of these books even though they're all like three stars for me, but they're so easy to read. I really like the audiobooks and they're super fast reads. They take like two hours because they're novellas. So that's the only reason I'm reading this one. Um, but I don't know which character this follows but I'm still intrigued to read it. I do like the writing, it's just the plots I'm not super into, but I like it enough to continue. And finally I want to read some of the classics that I've recently acquired and I ended up getting three books from H.G. Wells, so I've decided that I'm gonna spend a week reading his books. So these are the three that I've got. Um, I have The Invisible Man, The Time Machine, and War of the Worlds. I don't know if the Tom Cruise War of the Worlds is directly supposed to be a movie adaptation of this book, but yeah, let me just read the backs for you because I don't know exactly what they're about and the back is like nice and short and concise. So um, this is The War of the Worlds. In this pioneering, shocking, and nightmarish tale, naive suburban Londoners investigate a strange cylinder from space but are instantly incinerated by an all-destroying heat ray. Soon gigantic killing machines that are that chase and feed on human prey are threatening the whole of mankind. Okay, that sounds good. Sounds like the movie, but nice. 
Um, then we have the time machine. This one is a chilling prophetic take on mankind's possible future. The time machine sees a Victorian scientist propelled into the year AD 802,701, where he is delighted to find that suffering has been replaced by beauty and contentment in the form of Eloy? Eloy? An elfin species descended from man. But he soon realizes that they are simply remnants of a once great culture, now weak and living in terror of the sinister Morlocks lurking in the deep tunnels who threaten his very return. That sounds good too, oh my god. And then finally, The Invisible Man. Depicting one man's descent into murderous brutality, The Invisible Man is a hugely influential and riveting exploration of science's powers to corrupt. With his face swaddled in bandages and his eyes hidden behind dark glasses, Griffin, a man I guess at an inn is assumed to be an accident victim, but the true reason for his disguise is far more chilling. He has developed a process that makes him invisible and is desperate to find the antidote. It is a struggle that will turn him into a monster. Okay, my uh, camera died, so it's been very, very many minutes. Very, very? So it's been a lot of minutes. <laughs> I'm so sorry if the angle changed and the lighting and literally everything about it, but uh, yeah. So these sound super good. Reading the backs makes me even more excited to get to them. So yeah, I'm hoping that I can prioritize this and do a reading vlog for it next month. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Um, so yeah, that's it for my February TBR. I'm sure there are other books that I will be reading during the month, but those are the ones that I want to prioritize. So yeah, let me know if you guys have a main priority for next month for what you want to read, and I will see you guys in my next video.